All right. So hello, chat people. Hello to all y'all. All all, all uh, y'all. <clears throat> Except for that guy. He knows what he did. He knows who he is, too. I'm right here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, hi there. We hi. have... Oh. oh, hi, Chewy. Oh, hi. I, I Now I hate you. <laughs> You're welcome. So, yeah, we have no plan. We just decided we would hop on and chat about whatever came to mind. Yeah. Can I make a political joke? Just like the U.S. government, we have no plan. <laughs> oh, they have a plan. <laughs> Cylon music begins to play. <sighs> uh, Keeper Boy, did you just have a stroke on your keyboard? You know, Menelaus. Husband of Helen of Troy. Good times. Oh, okay, your fault. Got it. It's like <laughs> the Menelaus job, job wasn't my can't clues. I'm like, are you okay? <laughs> it wasn't my fault, clues. I'm gonna say the clues can't. <laughs> I mean, I appreciate references to the Trojan War. They're fun. They are. They also uh, deserve yes. a better oh, movie than oh, they yeah, ever I, gotten. I, I can't even. I also can't odd. Hmm. That just leaves a man. So you'll have to uh, forgive me, chat. I, I, I had a burrito. Hey, I had a burrito, too. We all had burritos. God, that's eerie. Nice. But I, I had a burrito for dinner from Chipotle, and I, I, I got a, a thing for free guac. So I had chips, too, with guac. And I finished that right before we came back here. So I am now sleepy. Mm. That would do it. So say we all. Oh my god, there's a Mr. Nicholas in our chat. Hey, buddy. Wait, is that is that the Mr. Nicholas? It is. That's awesome. Yeah, we, that's... We can't even. Nicholas' son's father's name. Fantastic. Well, it's so, good to virtually see you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, okay, something? you can see me. I can't see you, which is weird. It would be way weirder if you could see them. But I am picturing you, and you are a handsome man. I'd hit it. What? What? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> who wouldn't? <laughs> what? Uh, so, by the way, if I, uh, if I, like, doze off in the middle of this, could somebody, like, text me or something? Should we just, just poke you? Yeah, okay, that's fair. Yeah. Um, hey, uh, chat, how are we sounding? Uh, volume level's good? We okay? How how are you? If Chewie we're all, falls we're asleep, all I will here. text his upstairs neighbors to drop a child or something, and that will wake him up. I mean, they're going to do that anyway. Yeah, yeah I know, but are. I'm just going to text a random person, and it's still going to work. Uh, remind mm. me, did we record last week? Did that happen? Yeah. Yes. I feel like that's a thing that happened. That, that did is, happen, yeah. All right, great. Two weeks in a row. Go us. Yeah, it's I mean, been a dearth of news of late. Yeah. Because last week we were catching up on not recording the week before. Right. Um, there's Maybe. not a lot of news. Most of what I've seen about actual magic boils down to no one likes the current metagame. And even... And the Wizard people who do like, get... What can we do about it? <laughs> the people who do get, get crapped on. Yeah. So there was a there was an odd poll that Morrow put out uh, today where he yeah. was asking uh, like which format should be most impacted by a set releasing, and I assume he meant other than standard, but standard uh, was one of the options. In response to it, um, essentially he was talking about how when you release new cards, what is the furthest back you expect to see the card having an impact. Like the assumption is that if you pick legacy, that it's also impacting modern and everything above it. Okay. Um, because like, obviously every single set having an impact on legacy would be really disruptive over the course of time for legacy. But sometimes people want to see that. So I think that's what he was trying to get at. Okay. 
but I don't know. I, I think they're kind of in this spot right now where as someone not playing the current set and the fact that we don't have like all of the in-person paper events going on, mm -hmm. it's really just relying on internet feedback and that's a terrible way to exist. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I really don't know if things are as bad as the internet makes it out to be because these people are also grinding out arena and magic online like crazy and so they're gonna get bored of things faster you don't have the more slow pace of in person but they also really hate the repetition that the companion mechanic creates and i could see that that makes sense to me i understand that <laughs> um taking a lot of variants out of the game is bad for long-term playing the game that's why we don't do it usually yeah, you remember when they uh, stopped letting uh, people put up all of the like tournament results, like the 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 scraping of you know what what did well in what, to like the data solve. mining. Yeah, yeah, the data mining to solve formats too fast, and now uh, we'll just every everybody play as many games as you can stay awake for. Mm -hmm. That won't solve the formats. But hey, hey yeah, clues. Yeah, do me a small favor. Yes, move your camera more towards uh there's a big empty vo no the other way there's a big empty void behind your head and it's bugging me and then tilt it down just just a little bit well now there's a big empty void on that side right, yeah, right yeah, they, i overshot on purpose because i'm a i'm a jackass you want to point it down yeah just just a tiny bit look at that microphone oh there we go now yeah, you're more microphone. You're, you're better All right, framed it was, it was just, but I kept looking over at you going, something does not look right on Clues' camera. Yeah, but now mm -hmm. the top of my hat's cut off. It's true. Well, that, take, take your hat off. Then you won't uh, have the problem. Lower your... What there did he go. just say? He blinked out. Yeah, he said lower your, and then I got nothing. Oh, it's funnier if you don't know that. Oh, so it wasn't just me. Okay, good. <laughs> I heard lower okay, your... Look. Uh, Tenth Tech Priest has said the solution is just to put more things behind you to fill the void. You have literally just described everything I do with my life, and it's not working. Good old capitalism. Right now, <laughs> all the things behind me. I'm loaded with things. There's a Super Nintendo with a Game Genie sticking out of it back there. That's what life is for me. Wait, really? Yeah, can't you see it? No. Where's no, it at? It's, I want to uh, see that. I guess it's on this side. So yeah, it's, it's right it, it, there. There. Yeah. Super Nintendo with a Game Genie, and I think it's probably got Super Mario World or Chrono Trigger or something in it. it looks like Yoshi. Oh. I'm going to say it's Super yeah, Mario World. Yeah, I think Mario World. I think oh, I use wait. Super Mario World to keep my Game Genie clean. If I click on him, I can make him bigger. <laughs> I think that's ah. Super Mario World, yeah. I don't think this has made it better. Well, it made it better for me. I don't care about everybody else. <laughs> Oh, fair enough. And that is the American way, sir. Yeah, it is. Now I'm going to actually turn God. and look at it so I can confirm. Um, yeah, so that's a Game Genie with Super Mario World in it, but it's not in the slot because in the slot is Chrono Trigger where it belongs. Oh, okay. Chrono Trigger lives in the Super Nintendo. That's a good place to live if you're Chrono yeah. Trigger. It's a good place to be. <gasps> oh. Um, yeah. we're dropping frames like a boss apologies chat i don't know why and it's over never mind um i don't think the chat could handle chrono trigger uh new background i don't know is this a new background i think this is where i had my camera pointed last time i've got a could be got a whiteboard back here i i think he just doesn't it, show up terribly often <laughs> it used to be a chalkboard but I hung a whiteboard over it because, okay, the chalkboard wasn't really a proper chalkboard. The previous owners of the house put a little like frame on the wall and had painted the inside with like chalkboard paint huh. and it's fine, but I had this giant whiteboard. So I just hung it over that. Makes sense. I suppose it does. I, uh, my background's always the same, so uh in my work office they really bought into the whiteboard paint during one of the remodels 
Yeah. So they painted the entire back wall of the kitchen area with whiteboard paint and gave us markers so that we could leave things on it and be creative and get good ideas and stuff. And sometimes we did that. Other times we did whatever we wanted. Did you mostly just, did, did, did you draw a bunch of dicks? No, we did not draw a bunch of dicks. We only drew one. Okay. Um, <laughs> but it was more of a tracing. Um, Wait, you traced <laughs> your dick? <laughs> I didn't do anything. Um, but no, like specifically what it was, was they got in this habit of tracing the outline of a person and then leaving up the question of like, who do you think this is? And then having people write their name next to it with who they think it is. And whoever was right would get like a Starbucks card or something. And the first time they did it, it was clever. After like five of them, we decided whoever was doing this was a dick. Um, Cause it just got tedious. <laughs> um, Cause you sort of had to guess based on height, but like, Drawing an outline of a human being against a wall is already miserable. Doing it with a Sharpie on a wall that, by the way, whiteboard paint, like a real whiteboard, doesn't perfectly wipe off. So over time, you just get the smudgy wall. And they eventually just painted over it with normal stuff and put up a bunch of notes saying, please stop writing on the wall now. It is not for that. <laughs> it is no longer meant for this thing that we let you do for a few years. Um, though we did have fun with it sometimes like we once drew a big christmas tree on it and everyone got to like draw their own little ornaments and stuff um and then they like put other religious things up around it too so it wasn't just a christmas tree so like that was a better use of the wall sounds like it then some monster that was probably in the judge program kept leaving puns every day okay look (laughs) Puns are the highest form of humor. We already figured that out. Hey, listen, there was a, there was a question. Drugs that does not make it the highest form clues. There's a different there was a, meaning for that word. There was a, a question that went by in the, uh, the, the, the chat here for Mr. Nicholas. I answered that. You did. I did. Where? Right beneath it. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Well, look, we, Oh, Hey, there is swearing on this, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. There's I no logo. Good. There's just a kaiju, and the kaiju is blasting a building. So, like, you know. Yeah. Nice. Uh, so the question was, uh, what do we think the uh, uh, paper magic organized play looks like in the future? Um, and I answered, a clusterfuck. He sure did. And I'm not convinced that he's very mm-hmm. far off. I mean, that's what it's you. been f- for the last, what, two or three Year years? It's just a god-awful clusterfuck. Well, and no, I don't okay. think there's any reason to expect it to not be in the future. In in all fairness, uh, none of the three of us have actually been to many magic organized play events in the past, say, three years. Correct. So. But uh, I, don't I don't think know. he's asking about individual events. He's asking about on the whole. Yeah, yeah. But you made you made the claim that it was all just a, a complete dumpster fire for the past couple of years. I don't yeah. know if that's necessarily fair. We're I we're mean, outsiders looking in, and we're getting the hyperbole and it, the uh, the anger and the vitriol. If we're fair, a dumpster fire provides heat to the cold. <clears throat> okay, fair. Um, <laughs> from but what you know I've what seen burns of... nicely? Paper magic cards. <clears throat> oh. Uh, don't they burn blue? I actually don't know. I've, I, I don't know that I've ever burned any. I hope so. Oh, I don't um, have a way to set something on fire, believe it or not. I don't... I would grab, like, a land or something and burn it to see what uh, happens. I could probably do that, but I have a feeling you know, I would set up. Yeah, after. please don't. Yeah. Chewy, That's I feel like idea. if you made a video of you burning magic cards and posted it on YouTube, I think that would get a lot of views. I think there's probably already a video of someone burning magic cards on YouTube. Yeah, but yeah. is it Chewy? It's probably not Chewy. Good it chance. is definitely not Chewy, yeah. And there you go. I don't have a lighter or matches or anything, I don't think. I got one of those um, electric fire starty things, which is kind of neat. It just like tases the card until it burns. Zap your dumb ass. Yeah. Anyway, to uh, t- to answer the question, uh, man, I literally have no idea what the hell it's going to look like down the road. Because I, I cannot imagine any... Okay, I'm going to say something and it's going to sound mean. Okay, just wait for it. It's coming. 
Um, I cannot imagine uh, any rational person wanting to go into a giant hall filled with, you know, 2,000 nerds and uh, sit shoulder to shoulder with them for like 12 hours. But then there are magic players, so they're probably going to do it anyway. Like, I me. can't even me. watch... Huh? Excuse me. I can't even watch old TV shows where people, uh, yep. like, shake hands. <laughs> I'm like, stop! Oh, wait, this is old. Yeah, I, I think that there are going to be very lasting psychological scars to what's going on right now, and it's going to take a long time to overcome them. I mean, yeah. as someone who regularly goes to super crowded conventions, it's not really something I'm looking forward to in the future. Um, it's not like an, oh no, I'm exposed to germs, because that's always been there. Yeah. Uh, but I think that one of the nice things that can come out of this and like Wolfie hit on it in the chat is we have a lot of bad habits that are holdovers from like the 1950s, like shaking hands with strangers and crowding elevators and a bunch of other dumb stuff that as a society, we could totally get away from because a lot of other ones have. Yeah. And I've been to other countries where this isn't a thing and it's kind of nice. Um, you get a weird duality, like the one I'm referencing is Japan, where like you don't get near or touch anyone, and then you get on the subway and people literally cram you together into the smallest possible space. That's a weird outlier, but the not touching people thing is really nice. You just don't have to. There's no reason to. There's no reason to touch another person. And when you're sick, wearing a mask, if you have to go out at all, is just a good habit to have, because then when you sneeze, you're not spreading. So... There's a bunch of habits that I hope we take away from this as a people. Yeah, I um, could do without the handshaking. There's just, there's not a reason to do it. It's some dumb old macho nonsense that doesn't make sense anymore. And it never really made sense, but it certainly doesn't make sense now. Unnecessary so, disease vectors. I guess my pre-COVID plan of jumping from handshakes to the cheek kisses is just right out now. Yeah, that's just enough. I would not recommend it. Thanks, coronavirus. That's, that was going to be what I did this year, was just stop shaking hands and start licking cheeks or whatever. Can you is. tell that Chewie stopped going really... to magic events? Because <laughs> that's not exactly a Star City experience waiting to happen. Uh, I just, what was that? Shifuji's hosting. He does that. Nice. nice. Like, I think... A lot of that stuff's going to have to go away, but in terms of, like, actual magic, organized play, serious response, I've said it before. I go back and forth on this. Like, if you listen to the odds and ends, you hear me go back and forth on this. Like, I don't personally see a great deal of future for big-scale paper magic. Um, I think that Arena and Online are sort of taking the place of it. And I think this last month of people not being able to do it is going to be a really big stress test for how well online magic can survive without paper magic. And I'm going to look really closely at the data when they do their earnings call in like six months. Um, because I, I think they obviously want to do paper magic. It's been the bread and butter. It's the thing that keeps selling. It's how you get people to own more than four copies of common. Um, I think it's going to be a thing they want to do, but I think there's a bunch of logistical stuff with it. That's a pain. And if you can get people to just play online magic, it's probably going to be better investment long-term. <clears throat> yeah. I, I don't think that we're going to see, we're not going to see the death of paper magic. I mean, there, there are people who make those claims, uh, the death of paper of tournament paper magic, like, like actual high level tournament paper magic. I think we are going to see the death of that. And I think we were headed in that trajectory prior to this, to be honest with you, that, uh, uh, if, if Watsy could do it in uh, uh, a way that made sense financially, that they would rather go that direction uh, just because it eliminates a lot of headaches, right? If, if you can do it all digitally, but there's enough of a market for people who actually want to play at their kitchen table. And yeah. uh, at least for years, and I don't know if it's still the case, but it, at least for many years, 
like most of their sales came from people, those sorts of people, not from the tournament grinders. That's not really where, where, where Watsy made their money on paper magic because right. those people were buying singles on the secondary market. They weren't, they weren't cracking booster boxes. Um, it's your, uh, folks who do nothing more high level than taking down an F and M, uh, and, yeah. and well below that, that's where the, the true money came from sales wise for paper magic. And I think that that market is going to stay and that market is still going to be there. There's still people who want that paper experience who still want to be able to play with their totally jank deck uh, with their friends at their house. Uh, but as far as like giant GPs go, I think those are going to be something that's going to continue to fade. Um, yeah, I, I would agree with that completely. I think, I don't think paper magic's going. I think that's like, we all acknowledge the three of us. We don't enjoy playing online magic. Like I want to play with someone I know to talk to them, have a conversation while we're going, make that the game. And the game is what we're doing while we talk. I like to show off my weird cards that I've got, like the cool alternate arts, the foils, the any of that stuff. Like that's fun. Um, getting to talk about why I put this in my deck is a thing. Big group casual things and inventing new formats on the fly. That's all fun. And all of that's great. But when it comes to like tournament magic, you've got to deal with judges. You have to deal with rules calls. You have to deal with renting out ridiculously large spaces and scheduling it super far in advance. You have to deal with so many things that you don't have to deal with online. And considering they're kind of already shunted off the judge program and yeah. they delegated responsibility for large events, like most large events to a third party feels like that's kind of where wizard wants to go with it. And as long as channel fireball wants to keep taking on all the risk of setting up these big events and hoping that they work out wizards doesn't have an incentive to stop them. But if <laughs> CFB and star city decide that they don't really need this, then cool. But the thing is they're the ones that are selling the singles. So they kind of have to keep it going yeah. if they want to keep doing that. Whereas wizards doesn't wizards, only sells singles in the oh so rare every three week special five packs um but for the most part wizards is making their money off of the casual people who are just <clears throat> buying packs and boxes i mean for that matter the the online tournaments actually eliminate uh some of the other i'm gonna call them minor but constant headaches the pebble in your shoe if you will of uh playing in tournaments so if you want to go to a tournament let's say you want to go to a gp you you or something equivalent you want to go to a tournament and try and really try your skills against somebody okay so you gotta Test you gotta get time mind. you gotta Show get time to route. travel uh assuming that there's one close enough for you to travel to it you gotta get a hotel where you go you gotta travel there which is huge pain then you get there and now you have all of the logistics of i'm now going to be in this hall for the next like 16 hours and every time a match is done, I'm going to go stand around for like 20 minutes until pairings go up and then I go find my table again. So there's all this, there's all this downtime and, uh, I, I you know, I'm going to call it wasted time. There's all this wasted time that goes into going to an event. All that's gone. You're now doing it in your house at your computer. And when a match is done, you're in another match because there's enough people to just match you with. And uh, it, it eliminates so many of those headaches. Is it the same experience? No, not at all. There, there's, at the risk of sounding corny, there's just something magical about going to a large paper tournament. But there's a huge cost to that in time, in trouble, in effort, in money. And now you can just do it. Oh, I've got two hours to kill. I'm going to join this queue and, and hop in and do this. So, you know, I think the future, the future is totally digital uh, for, for organized play at high levels. Oh, and yes, you're right. Pants are optional. That is very important. At, at a paper magic tournament, pants are not optional, just That's to be true. clear. Now, all of that said, one of the directions that I liked where these things were going for a while that I think might get dropped to the side is that I appreciated all of the things going on at big magic events that weren't the tournament. Like yeah. all the side events, all the people showing up in cosplay, all of the like going out with your friends to dinner, like that time we did the pizza thing, like meeting other podcasters, all of those social things 
you don't get a substitute for in this. And I really like that they were embracing that a bit more. But they're not going to keep these things going just for that. There's no way. But hey, we'll see how long Channel Fireball and Star City want to keep these things happening because they need to sell those singles. They do. Yeah. It's a, it's a mess. That's what I'll say. It's a mess. All right. Well, that was sad. Um, what else do we want to talk about? Um, a bit ago in the chat, it was next topic, video game soundtracks. Cowboy Bebop. Just the best soundtrack, hands down, right there. Best video game soundtrack. It's definitely Cowboy Bebop. Yep. I was going to say, hang on, we're... Something about this doesn't add up, but I'm not sure. I know, but it's all I've been listening to for the past three days, so I couldn't help myself. Fair. Nice. Uh, I routinely listen to various Mega Man soundtracks while I'm in the shower. That's fair. Only in the shower? Because that seems. Yeah, otherwise I'm working. It's the only time I just listen to music is. Oh, okay. Fair. It's in the shower. Fair. Uh, I learned don't listen to uh, Metal Gear Solid soundtrack in the shower because as soon as the alert music uh, pops up, I'm like hiding, pressing up against the wall, waiting for uh, someone to come get me because it's been ingrained into me to hide when I hear that music. And so that's, that's not healthy for showering. That's fair. I, it's similar to the thing where like, if you make your ringtone, the sonic drowning thing, you will traumatize everyone in your immediate area. (laughs) Um, Accurate. you shouldn't do that. It's evil, but it would probably work for everyone over the age of like 30. Um, the, uh, Katamari Damashi soundtrack is amazing, but that's just cause that music is amazing. Um, I really enjoy, and this isn't going to be everybody's cup of tea. Uh, the soundtrack to destiny, like the, the video game destiny. Um, I have not those, heard the soundtrack Destiny. those soundtracks are amazing. They're, they're very orchestral because, uh, you know, they're meant to be like background mm-hmm. music during, you know, all these crazy battles that you're doing. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I, I, I think I own all but the latest expansions soundtrack and they're all great. Now, the problem is I don't know how much of that is tied up in uh, the emotions that I felt when playing the game the first time versus is it actually good music and i'm actually i i don't know that i can really separate those things i definitely flash back into the scenes where i heard the music when i listen to video game soundtracks yeah and i think that can throw it off a bit like oh yeah i i also has been listening to um oh god which one was it over the last few weeks i have listened through i i, I found the playlist on youtube and hit shuffle uh final mm-hmm. fantasy Four, six, and Chrono Trigger. Good choices. Yeah, and all of those, as soon as a piece starts, I can see it. I got traumatized when the Calcabrena music started playing from Final Fantasy IV. I got stuck yeah. there once. I, I could not beat the damn... I, I couldn't beat... Golbez, I think, you have to fight after you beat the Calcabrena? I couldn't, I, I couldn't you. do it. And, and, and so now that piece of music is like, eh, 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 eh. I know that I've listened to the Chrono Trigger soundtrack, the Edge of Time remix Chrono Trigger soundtrack, um, Chrono Cross, which is one massive remix of Chrono Trigger with PlayStation level music, and I love it. And the Chrono Symphonic thing by OC Remix so oh, God, many times so good so many times over history that i'm pretty confident even though i can't play music i could recreate all of these things if you were to give me some ability to project sound from my head like perfectly um because they're all amazing that sounds uh, like a creepy sci-fi novel by the way uh, which you, one? Just, you just develop the ability to project sound from your head well, I, I started out with the idea of the holophoner from Futurama, but... Oh, yeah. nice. Are we dropping frames, like, every three seconds, or is my connection just bad? It's your connection. Oh, okay. Right. 
Um, so, uh, uh, Mr. Nicholas asked in the chat here if I'm still playing Destiny 2. Uh, sadly, no. I haven't really played much in the way of video games in like six months just because I haven't had time. Last semester was pretty bad. And then this semester, oh yeah, the world fell apart halfway through, which was just awful. Uh, but most of my buddies that I played Destiny with, uh, they all moved on to Call of Duty. And I have absolutely zero interest in Call of Duty. It has no interest for me at all whatsoever. I, I like my... Uh, I like my first-person shooters to be uh, crazy over the top and uh, involved in sci-fi. I have no interest in realistic first-person shooters. That's However, fair. all of them do. So that's what it is. Hey, chat, I actually have a question for you. Or maybe for Chewy or Squee as well. Um, so my semester is ending. I'm working on my final grades here uh, these, yeah. these uh, couple of days. Um, what is a good game for the Nintendo Switch that isn't, I repeat, isn't Animal Crossing? Because I have no interest in a second job. I don't want Animal Crossing. I've played Animal Crossing games in the past. They're fine. I enjoyed them. I'm not really interested in one right now. What, what should I play? What genre are you feeling? I don't know. It's like, I don't have a Switch. Okay. Yeah. But I know that like everyone in the world enjoys breath of the wild yes i i have and, breath of the wild um i played that I, for a long time but i haven't a lot of it. people had fun throwing hats at things and possessing them as mario okay that one i played played all the way through it it was good yeah and um if you're feeling more jrpg ish they are re-releasing xenoblade chronicles on the switch in like two or three weeks huh. and Everyone seems to love that. I love all of the Zeno games I've played, but I haven't played that one yet because I own it for the Wii. And it takes a lot for me to dig out and play games on my Wii because I am sick of the Wii mote forever. <laughs> yeah, that's I fair. It. I absolutely hate it. Uh... And I have no desire to constantly cycle batteries in and out of it and deal with its nonsense if I can avoid it. Uh, also, if you want to do JRPGs, I've heard that Octopath Traveler is amazing from many, many people. They advertised the crap out of it while I was in Japan. Yeah. Like, that was huge. It was all over the Square Enix Cafe. And it was surprising to me because Kingdom Hearts 3 had just come out a month before. <laughs> and they were all about the Octopath Traveler. But also, Clues, that's, that's a really hard question because there's so much on the Switch because they've embraced letting indie mm -hmm. gamer indie uh companies put their games on the switch yeah like half of the smaller games that i've played over the last several years are on the switch and they're all good hmm. like if you want a platformer go for shovel knight or the messenger if you want uh like roguelikes oh my god they're like all on there i think slay the spire is on there um Somebody said one earlier that uh, Dead Cells is on there. There, th there's there's too much. It, yeah, there's that's why I said, "What do you want?" On it. Yeah. All right, I'm writing some of these down because there's a bunch that have been going by in the chat here. Oh, I like how we're gonna tell them all. That's weird. Like, I like how we're gonna give clues all these suggestions, and he's just gonna end up playing Katamari Damacy. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Uh, that, that, or, hey, you know what's a really good game that is on the Switch? Uh, Pizza Titan Ultra. Oh, it's on the Switch, too? Yeah, it is. Oh, nice. Uh, oh. And it's really good. <laughs> oh. You, uh, you okay there, bud? I was dying slowly. There you go. And mm. I'm sorry, what was the, it was Octopath something? Traveler. Traveler, Traveler. okay. I know that Pinball Witch ranted about how great it was uh, for a long time in the Discord server, and other people joined in. Yeah. All right. It's one of those rare times where Square Enix is making something new. Yeah. As opposed and to reselling something old. Unlike <laughs> first-party Nintendo games, these will actually go on sale in the Switch stores at various points. What? Which can be nice. Is that allowed? Like... I am considering once things settle down and it becomes feasible to do so, getting a Switch just because, like I said, I want to play Xenoblade Chronicles and I don't want to play it on my Wii. So 
that becomes a viable thing for me now because like i don't want to play a handheld but if i get a switch it's not just a handheld i can plug it into my tv it'll be great my handheld is my phone well all right so th thank you thank you chat and squee and chewy for some suggestions um with luck i'll have time to actually play video games again in the next i don't know week or so that would be nice yeah dream, it would be man. neat it would be real neat because i used to do that i used to play video games back when i was a younger man when, like last when i was a young oh. warthog <laughs> I hope that synced up when people heard it. Good time. I doubt it. Yeah, that I doubt it too. But. Uh, so, hey, uh, what's uh, what's the weather like for you boys down there? Because it's going to be 25 degrees here overnight. Uh, we like, had a freeze Celsius? advisory on Saturday night. Nice. Uh, by the end of the week, it will be in the 80s again. Yeah. All right. That sounds about right. Um, these are Fahrenheit. If we hit the 80s in Celsius, uh, sorry, I lived a life. Yeah, apologies. We're we're using Fahrenheit, which well, when you said I, twenty five, I said yeah Celsius, but nobody heard it. So yeah, sorry, no uh, Fahrenheit. Um, yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, I know that uh, Megan and Casey up in upstate New York said we're getting snowed on, and I said it's May. That makes sense. Yep, things get weird during the end times. The trick is crank You're in Hawaii. That makes sense. <laughs> You have to adjust the thermostat to kill the murder hornets and whatever else we're afraid of right now. I'm sorry, you just say Chifuji is in Hawaii? Yeah. Oh, nice. Where Whereabouts in Hawaii? Not that I know the islands very well. I but... was going to say, did, will, will that tell you anything? No, I'm just I'm just curious. I'm just curious. <laughs> oh, people I didn't break of, my toe. It just people think like of Hawaii it. is just one place, but mm. it's it's not. There's more than one island. Oh, um, I will make a small note about it. Like, if you like the original Final Fantasy VII soundtrack, you might enjoy the soundtrack that they did for the remake because it's the same themes, just, you know, slightly jazzed up a bit. But also they have a mechanic in the game where you find, like, discs that you can put in jukeboxes, and they're all completely different genre renditions of themes from the original game. Like, it's really weird and different, but I, I found it to be a lot of fun. That sounds so, awesome. Yeah, like supremely different genres of things like you get the um i think at one point it was like a reggae version of the turks theme or something yeah. like it just it worked really nicely for a lot of them like some of them were garbage like hip-hop to chocobo is not something i recommend but there's a lot of stuff in there that was fun um so give that playlist on youtube that's inevitably been ripped and dumped in there a listen if you liked the old ff7 music and you're not planning on playing the game because some of it's nice. and like all the main themes that they actually kept like you know the boss battle music and stuff sounds great so that's always nice hey clues yeah do you like uh doom uh yes the doom 64 remake is on switch for fadala huh because doom 64 uh, we talked about this on the, the Manipool, not Manipool episode that we did that was like this, but with those dorks. Doom 64, I didn't know this at the time when it was new, was not just a Doom port onto the 64. It's actually a different game. Really? Yeah, it's actually like essentially Doom 3, but because it's only on one system and nobody played it, apparently, uh, it never got put anywhere else. And then Doom <laughs> 3 got made. But yeah, if you like old, the old Doom games, um, I don't think you can really beat that. It's a brand new remaster. It came out on the same day as Doom Eternal, so less than a month ago, I think. Oh yeah, how is Doom Eternal? Uh, it depends Maybe on who hell? you ask. Okay. The only thing I know about it is the Isabel pictures. That's all yeah, I same know. here. So the original, well, the original, the the Doom what twenty sixteen was all about. Just killing things. You run around and you kill things and you jump on things and you and you shoot them in the head and they explode and, you, and then you do that. And that was... That's everything. It was that. Mm -hmm. 
And then with Doom Eternal, they decided, hey, let's not make it just that. And they've added, like, mobility abilities and platforming and all kinds of other things. Which, to me, sounds awesome. But if the only part of the Doom remake, the Doom reboot that you liked was the, the, the gory, brutal murder thing, then those people hate it. Because yeah. they... Instead of just doing Doom 2016 again, they added mm-hmm. a whole lot of new stuff and made like a fully realized game. And people, some people can't handle that because it's not more of the same. Wasn't Doom 2016 again like the playtest name for 2020? I don't know what you're talking about. Like the, the year. year? It was the playtest yeah. name for the year that we're in right now? Because I could see that. I could see like that, yeah. Like this, yeah. Also, something I've noticed something seems to be up with my camera. Do I look like green to you guys? Why do I look green? I, I don't know. I can't. I can't see you on this screen. Hold you on. Slightly green to me. Stand by. Chewy, I yeah, just, you look a little green, man. Projected off of an original Game Boy. Do you have a green screen just off screen? Yeah, that must like be it. Yeah. Up? Let's see. That would be color intense. No color. What would that be? Would that be white balance? Find the melancholy bar and reduce it. <laughs> there. That's that's a little bit better. Now with reduced melancholy. Da, da, da. I don't know. Something is, something's always wrong. Either the microphone setting's wrong or the camera oh, looks funny or what. You got the Glock. Oh, I did oh, get free yeah. Glock. Yeah. 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 Must be yeah. the Glock. Today I learned I'm like Hawkeye. True. Yeah. 